Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely Friday morning. I was winning the battle against the mosquitoes earlier, and therefore happy to be outside, alongside this beautiful scenery. Unfortunately, they came back with a vengeance, and they started to win the battle against me. So I retreated. But I'm still going to keep the camera outside so that you could see this lovely scenery as we discuss this article. I'm a bit conflicted in how to feel about this article. You have a John Deere dealership that was really trying to push a customer elsewhere and trying to decline them service. And uh, this is something that I'm conflicted on as a shop owner because there are many times where I have wanted to decline a customer service who has been a royal pain in the ass. However, I do think there are differences between the John Deere dealership and what I do because I don't have access to these magical exclusive tools that the customer themselves would not be able to get. If I decline you in repairing your item, pretty much everything we do at this repair shop has been logged on my YouTube channel or repair.wiki so that you can do it yourself or you can find another technician to do it for you. Whereas when it comes to John Deere, there are certain repairs that where you really just have to go to the dealer and you don't have much of a choice. So I'm a little conflicted on how to feel here and I'm kind of curious what you all think. Now this article from the Capital Forum says, Missouri farmer alleges deal John Deere dealer threatened him, showing customer frustration with lack of repair options. I'm not going to read the entire article, but I will read the highlights. This is about a Missouri farmer named Jared Wilson, who I met in person back in March. He seems like a genuine and a good dude. So I, you know, I tend to assume that what is in this article is put forth in good faith. So it says, after a mechanical valve on his Deere fertilizer spreader broke, the machine couldn't be repaired until error codes from a Deere authorized technician were entered, forcing Wilson to bring the machine to a dealership. The machine sat for 32 days, costing him an estimated $30,000 to $60,000 in lost work. When he called about having the air conditioner fixed, the foreman said he would have to speak with someone else to authorize the repair. Our past few interactions, it hasn't been very profitable for Heritage Tractor to work on your equipment. So I'm just wondering why you would even want to have us work on your equipment if you don't think that we can do a good job. That is what the manager told him. And the manager was kind of doing his best to push him to go somewhere else. And the manager also told Wilson, according to Wilson, we don't need the drama associated with you as a customer. Now, the issue that he had had in the past was when he had prior repairs done, Wilson says that he was billed for repairs that were not done properly or not done at all. So in one case, he explained that in December 2021, the dealership had conducted faulty maintenance on his combine, causing grain to leak as the machine was uh, as the machine harvested. And there are also cases where he says that he was wrongly billed. So in one case here, he says, what I took for them is I'm causing drama by objecting to faulty repairs that I am billed for. I also took it to mean that the advocacy work that I am doing is causing him drama or is problematic for him. And, you know, again, he says he, Wilson is complaining about what he described as a previously botched repair for which he was wrongly billed. He took his criticisms public. He is discussing this with the FTC and so on and so forth. Now, I'm a little bit conflicted here because on one hand, we have declined customers in the past when it's obvious that we're never going to make them happy. We don't try to just fix your machine. We want you to be happy. And at the end of the day, if you're not happy, if you find a bunch of things that are wrong or not right, we tend to just give you your money back and say, we, you know, we give up and we are not, you know, I I'm not going to waste time going back and forth for 12 hours over a $100 repair. If I realize that I can't make you happy, I usually just refund, send on your way onto the next customer. There was one customer who we told we cannot get a new top case for, we can only get used. Are you okay with this? He nodded at us. We gave him a top case that looked 99% good. I'm not kidding. This dude had some like 50 or 60 megapixel camera with this 300, you know, the $3,000 lens and he's like zooming in as much as he can to see this teeny tiny imperfection inside the casing port of the part of the ethernet port and say, this is not what I asked for. I demand satisfaction. So, again, I understand when you, you, you just know you're never going to make somebody happy just saying, listen, here's a refund. We wish you the best of luck. Go somewhere else. And I've done that before because there are some people that are just going to eat. Some customers will just chip away at your soul. That being said, the reason I think it's different is A, this is the only place that can service him in an 80 mile radius. There are many other MacBook repair shops within a, you know, a, a two block radius of me where I am in Manhattan. But more importantly, I don't have access to anything special that is necessary for the repair to be done. So if I decline you service as a MacBook repair shop owner in New York City, that doesn't mean that you can't have the repair done. Not only are there other repair shops out there, but all the knowledge that I have on how to do my job is shared freely on repair.wiki, 
on YouTube in my 150 page guide on the forums that I have. So not only are there other options out there, but there's really no proprietary knowledge to my business because I've made it all public. Whereas when we're talking about John Deere, and we go to the sentence in the article, after a mechanical valve on his Deere fertilizer spreader broke, the machine couldn't be repaired until error codes from a Deere authorized technician were entered, forcing Wilson to bring the machine to a dealership. So if I say no to you, I am not closing you off from the ability to have your product repaired. Whereas if the dealership, that's the only dealer in an 80 mile radius that's authorized to reset this code, doesn't uh, offer you service, even if you are able to replace the parts that you need, you're not gonna be able to reset the error code. So it's this really different power dynamic, it's this different relationship where they can hold your tractor hostage because your tractor is not going to accept the repair that you do to it unless they give it the say so. And that I think is what makes all the difference here between what I would do at my business when I reject a customer and what they do at their business when they reject a customer. Which is what, so in my opinion, the bar for your ability to reject or deny service to a customer, I imagine is something that should be higher if you're operating in an industry where the company that you represent has gone out of their way to ensure that there is only one option for resetting an error code one option for getting a repair done. But I'm kind of curious what you all think. Again, I'm very sensitive to the idea. I think that you should be able to reject customers who are a pain in the ass if you believe they're a pain in the ass. But at the same time, you're literally going out of your way to make sure you're the only person that can do something. And uh, that, that's, uh, that, that's where this gets to be kind of difficult to to really come to a clear conclusion with. But I'm curious what you all think of this article. I will link to this down below for anybody who's interested. And uh, again, ho hope you enjoy the scenery. It's, uh, it's really nice to just kind of see the water on the lake move by really slowly. I do hope that the YouTube compression does not completely destroy the quality of that or the little ripples and the waves in the water because it genuinely is beautiful the way it looks on my screen right now. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.